I used to always worry about what people thought of me and would try so hard to live by society standards. Then I realized that I was created to be different and regardless of what I did, I would never fit in. So I decided to follow my dreams instead. Join me on this journey as I grow in my faith, go through the ups and downs of pharmacy school, and most importantly, being God's masterpiece. Hey everyone, welcome to another Monday Devotion with D. So have any of you ever dealt with guilt or feeling guilty? These two hands, because this is seriously my life. Um, there are things that I have done that I'm not proud of. There are things that I've dealt with the wrong way that I'm not proud of. And sometimes it can really make your life really heavy and make it hard to continue moving forward with God's plan and God's purpose in your life. So in today's video, I really want to hit this head on and I really want to share some wisdom, <laughs> share some knowledge or even learn because this is something that I need to learn too, um, of how to get rid of guilt, how to get past guilt and how to move forward with your life. So I think that it's like inevitable that we all sin. It's like it's part of our human nature. Like God says it in his word. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Like we've all fallen. It's like God knew. He was just like, listen, I know my people. They don't sin. There were moments in my life where I just felt so guilty about something where it literally consumed my mind and my thoughts and it really made me just question everything and just made me feel like such a terrible person. And that's what guilt does. It makes you feel so terrible about what you've done. I feel like the enemy knows this. And it's just like, it's so crazy how the enemy can like tempt you, can put all this stuff in front of you and be like, oh yeah, like you should do this or you really should do this. Like, you know you want to do it just do it you know and then it's the same enemy that makes you feel guilty for the very thing you did it's just like how dare you do that you're not a christian anymore if there's been one thing that i've learned when it comes to guilt it's first realizing that you have guilt first realizing that you have fallen short a big hindrance to understanding this realization is pride our pride literally stops us from moving forward in our life at so many points and you don't even realize it sometimes. So if I mess up, half the time I'm just like, no, I didn't mess up. I know I did this right. Like I know I didn't, I wasn't wrong in this. I try to justify everything that I did wrong. I'll be like, well, I only did this because of this, that, that, and the third. And they'll be facts, they'll be right. But it's just like, that's my pride. My pride is just like, well, you are right. But really the Holy Spirit's just like, well, you might be right but show God's love as a Christian, step up and, and try to realize what other people could be thinking or how other people can be feeling or how your actions are affecting others. Pride can really get in the way of your deliverance from guilt. And so I would say definitely the first thing is to realize that you actually even have guilt because sometimes you might be saying, well, I know I'm right about this and be, and you have all this bitterness and this hate in your heart and this anger, not realizing that you're just harboring guilt. It's like you low key feel guilty about what you did, but you're too prideful and you're too bitter to do something about it. The second part of it is actually doing something about it. It's just like, okay, now that you realize that you are guilty because of this, that, and the third, what are you going to do? about it. This guilt does not have to define you, but understanding that you are God's child and he is right there and ready to forgive you and to really make that wrong right. I think sometimes in our brains we 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 build up this this storyline that we cannot get past guilt that if we've fallen into sin, if we've fallen into lust, we've fallen into whatever it is that you're dealing with, that there's no way out, that you can't get out of it and that once you've fallen that you're messed up and there's no going back. Absolutely not. I want to debunk that thought in your mind right now. Anyone who's watching this video, it's just like there's that guilt that's just pressing on you over and over every single morning when you wake up and not realizing the truth. The truth is, is that you don't have to feel like that because God has provided a way out. Those thoughts in our mind are so loud telling us, no, you messed up so you cannot go back. God doesn't love you. God is not gonna forgive you. No, silencing those thoughts. Like I wanna silence those thoughts right now. Anyone who has those thoughts in your head, I wanna silence that and be like, no, you are God's masterpiece and you are his child. He has made a way for you out of this guilt a long time ago. 
Don't let your thoughts or the enemy stop you from moving forward. Getting into your word, reading scripture of realizing like, okay, I am God's masterpiece. Okay, what does God say about me? Even in my mess, God still loves me. The next thing I would say is addressing it. Um, I think sometimes we like to fall into this whole idea like, okay, I'll just pray, ask for forgiveness, and it's all good. When you know very well that maybe an apology is needed to someone, and this is another area where pride can really be a barrier to that because you might think to yourself, oh, well, I already asked for forgiveness, so it's all good. But yet you still have that guilt. You want to know why you still have that guilt? Because you need to go apologize to someone because you need to go address something, because you need to go fix something that you've messed up. It takes a lot of courage to do that. Or even when someone hurts me, it's hard for me to go and say, hey, that really hurt my feelings and I didn't like that. And, but I'm more of the person, I'm the type of person where I'll just be like, you know what? It's cool, whatever, like they did what they did. I'll just fall back. You know, we, we in this generation of the fallback, like, nah, my fallback game too strong, all this stuff. Y'all need to stop playing. Like, you need to stop. That's what's hindering you from getting out of this guilt is your, your fallback game being too strong. So what I'm really trying to get at is that um, getting out of guilt means taking active steps too. If you are in a situation where that's impossible, where you can't reconcile, where you can't, and you're dealing with that guilt, it's hard. It's, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's very hard, especially when you know that there aren't steps that you could take aside from seeking repentance and forgiveness. This is where you have to actively remind yourself that there's nothing else that you can do and you have to give it to God. I think sometimes um, guilt eats away at us, but we don't realize that we have power over what we wanna think and over what we wanna do. We can wake up in the morning and feel guilty about what we did and knowing that we can't correct it, or you can wake up and you can say, I know that I have sought forgiveness and I know that I have reached out to God regarding this manner. So I'm going to wake up and I'm going to, to be a better person every single day. If you hurt someone and you can't fix that, then, then be kind to other people. Be kind like no other. Learn from that mistake. Learn from that issue that you had and move forward to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Share your testimony with other people so that they don't hurt other people like you did. It, I think it's like sometimes we realize that our perspective can change regarding this manner and that we don't have to sit in that guilt forever. If you struggle with pornography in your past, if you struggled with sex, if you struggled with drugs, if you struggled with insecurities, like don't let those past things eat at you now. God is trying to mold and shape you into who he's created you to be, his masterpiece. And yet here we are holding ourselves back based off of things that we did in the past. Mm -mm. Uh-uh, sweetie, you gotta let that go. Fellas, you gotta let that go. Like, it, you cannot drag that with you, but you have to let it go. But you can use it as a lesson and learn from it and move forward. That's the biggest thing that I want to get at in this video of just understanding that your past doesn't define you, but it can shape you, mold you, and make you better. When trying to deal with the guilt, first thing I would say is to acknowledge that you have the guilt. Then seek out God's truth and kind of debunk a lot of the lies that are going on in your head. Then take active steps. You know, a lot of times it's more than just praying and it's more than just asking God, but it's taking those steps to really follow his word. The Bible says forgive, forgive. The Bible talks about reconciliation, reconcile. Do what it is that you have to do. And if you're struggling with certain addictions, seek the Lord. Really take active steps to stop, whether it be putting certain protection on your laptop, whether it be making certain standards for you, whether it be having self-control. So that's it. That's all I wanted to share for today. I hope you all have a great day. I hope you enjoy this Monday. I hope it is amazing and that it is great. I hope that you choose after watching this video to move past guilt and to finally walk in freedom and walk in peace because you deserve it. Y'all already know the deal. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or anything that you want to share, you can comment below or you can email me at behismasterpiece at gmail.com. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Smile because your smile seriously is beautiful. And I actually read something on the internet and it says that people can send, no, it wasn't the internet. I was reading a book in the store. I was in Barnes & Noble today and I was reading a book and it was like, people can see a smile from 300 feet away. Can you believe that? Like, wow, that's how impactful your smile is. So smile, seriously, smile. Be kind, be loving, be nice, be caring, and as always, be his masterpiece. <laughs> Bye, everyone.